Okay, good morning or good afternoon, class. Um, I am recording 4.5. Um, I will have sent out a remind text um, that mentions that I won't be able to come to class, but versus getting a substitute um, to come in and explain, I'd rather just explain it myself and record it and offer it to you guys. And then if you have any questions, you can comment in the video. It'll, at, in the videos, it always has a spot for you to uh, post questions. So you can ask questions there, or if you want uh, quicker responses, you can ask me questions by text using the Remind app. Um, so, or if you're getting any of my text messages directly to your phone in your text messaging app, not Remind app, um, then you can just reply to any of those text messages I've ever sent to you if they're going directly to your message app, okay? Um, people use different messaging apps, so I'm not sure which you know device you're using or what messaging app you're using. But if you get any of my texts directly to your messaging, you can just reply from there with any questions you have. Um, if you're not getting my messages directly to your text box, um, then try looking at the Remind app and seeing what your inbox, inbox looks like in there, and then you can reply inside the app, okay? And it's Remind, R-E-M-I-N-D. Okay, so today we're going to cover 4.5. I'm going to go through as much of it as I can, but I am going to try to keep in uh, mind the time um, that it's taking me to cover this, okay? So... For example one, it's all about solving equations. And so far we only have two um, ways to solve. We know that if we have an exponential with some exponent and another exponential with another exponent, then those two exponents must be equivalent to each other, right? The third option or the second option is actually if you have log with some base of some argument um, equal to log with the same base but a different argument. Then what happens is, is that if the logs and the bases are the same, then the arguments must be the same in order for um, that equation to be true, okay? Now what we have, which is this rule that they're showing here, okay? So if you have it this, then you're just worried about the... Um, you also have a third option which is to convert an equation like this, a base with an exponent equal, and you can convert it to log base b of a equal to x. Okay, so those are our two options. It's either to rewrite it, if it's in exponential form, write it in log form. If it's in log form, write it in exponential form or we can apply any of these two rules that I have here in blue as well. So looking at example A, there's two ways to solve both you know, A and B. So the first way, okay, is this is the first solution, is to convert to log equation. And so then my log, my base would be seven, just like the base is there. And then 12 equal to X, okay? And if I have that, then I can use that change of base formula that we learned the last time, which means I'll have ln of two over ln of seven equal to X. And if I want my answer to the nearest thousandth, I will type that in here and then round it. So ln of 12 divided by ln of seven, and we get um, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So about 1.277, okay? The second way to solve this would be to take this function here or this equation here, and then just basically do log base seven of each side, right? Because when you're trying to get rid of an exponential, you're um, going to use its inverse, which is the, the log base 7. So that cancels out all these 7s, and you just end up with x 
And look, you end up with the exact same expression that you had before, right? Log base seven of 12 is equal to X, which is exactly what I have here. And we know that that eventually is ln of 12 over ln of seven, which rounds to 1.277, okay? So you can do it in either way, either convert it to a different kind of equation or apply the inverse. So same thing here, if I wanted to do it the second method first, um, my base is one half, so I would do log base one half and do the same on this side, log base one half of six. Now over here, the log base one half and the exponential base are gonna cancel each other out and I'm just gonna have X. And instead of having log base one half of six, I cannot type that in my calculator, but if I use the change of base formula, I put ln of the argument over ln of the base. Um, and then I'm not sure what that is. So fraction ln of six over, oops, ln of one half. And we get negative 2.585 because that nine will change this four to a five, okay? And if I did it the second way, which is to convert it to a log, equation, it would be log base one half because that's the base here. And then the six and the X switch sides of the equation. And notice I have the exact same thing, ln of six divided by ln of one half, which we already know is about negative 2.585, okay? So you do have two ways to do it. You just have to choose one of those ways um, and go from there. Okay, so same thing with this one. The only problem with this problem with this um, example is that um, I can't apply the log base two on both sides yet because I don't have the exponential part all by itself. Notice that here this exponential piece was alone, and here the exponential piece was alone. In this one, the exponential piece is not alone. So we do have to move things over, like if we were solving a linear equation. So you move over your constants first, and then that would be 18, and then you get rid of your coefficients. So we get two to the power X equals nine, 18 divided by two is nine. And then from there, you can either choose method A or method B, right? Convert it to a logarithm or do log base two on both sides, okay? So if I'm going to do log base two on both sides, Make sure you do it on both sides. Here, the bases are going to cancel each other out, and I'm just going to have x. And then here, I can type that in my calculator by doing ln of the argument over ln of the base. And then I'm not sure what that is. Let's see. Fraction ln of 9 over ln of 2. I get 3.16. Ooh, there we go. We should be rounding three places, but that nine will turn this nine into a 10, which will turn this six into a seven. So that's actually what it rounds to when you round it to the nearest thousand. Okay, so moving on, we're going to skip those kinds of problems, but we are gonna work with the logarithmic problems. Now, remember when you have LN, so there's two logs, right? There's the common log, so when you see that, you have to remember that it's base 10. And then we have the natural log. And when you see that, you have to remember that it's log base E of X, okay? So you don't have to write log base E. You could just write a little subscript that's informal, right? But it just reminds you that it's log base E, okay? So remember, you cannot... Um, do anything, you can't convert it into exponential form and you cannot apply um, the base if it's not all by itself. So I do have to get rid of this seven first. So I'm gonna have ln of X by itself and 28 divided by seven is four. And then remember that this is a base E. So if I wanna get rid of the ln, I'm gonna have to raise both sides of the equation um, to the base E. So notice how it's e to the ln of x and then e to the 4 on both sides. 
Um, then E is going to cancel out the LN because this is log E and base E. They wipe each other out. And so you just have X equal E to the fourth power. Now, this one wants exact values. So you're not going to convert that to a decimal. This is the answer that they want. Okay. And you can check this one in your calculator, right? You can clear 7 LN of E to the fourth power, right? And it is 28. So it does check out. Same thing here, but this logarithm is by itself. It's log base two of this whole thing. So if I want to get rid of the log, I'm going to use base two as my exponential. So two raised to the log base two. And then on this side, two raised to the three. So over here, they cancel and I get x cubed minus 19 equal to two cubed is eight. And now this, I have to continue solving for x. So I'm going to add 19 on both sides. I get that x cubed equals 27. I'm going to have to take the cube root on both sides. And then I get that x equals 3. Now, there's no plus or minus. Plus or minus is only when you take the square root or fourth root or sixth root. It has to be an even root. When you take an odd root, like 3, right, an odd radical, then you do not need plus or minus, OK? And we can check this. Um, it's going to be a little bit hard to check this because you essentially have to do ln of x cubed minus 19 over ln of the base, which is 2. So let's try that and see if we get 3. So we're going to do ln of 3 to the third power minus 19, close that parentheses, over ln of 2. And we're going to see if it comes out to equal 3. And it does. So this answer is correct. Okay, and we did check that one as well. Now here, they want us to solve a logarithmic equation. And I see logs on both sides of the equation. So I definitely want to try to use this rule that says if you have logs that are the same, um, then their arguments must be the same. There's only one issue here, and that's that I don't have just one log on this side. I have two. However, I have some log properties that allow me to put those two together, right? So if you remember this property, it said if you have log with some base and some argument minus log with the same base and maybe a different argument, then you ended up with log base B of X over y. And I can't squeeze in the other parentheses, but you get that the argument turns into a division, right? So here, this would be log, and there's no base. It's like an invisible 10, but it would be of this first um, argument divided by the second argument. And then now, because I have log base invisible 10 and log base invisible 10, I'm really just concerned when this argument is going to equal this argument, okay? And from there, you solve using your um, equation rules, right? So let me first get rid of my denominator by multiplying both sides by x plus 2. So here they cancel, and I end up with x plus 6. Here I have to distribute, so I end up with x squared plus 2x. And then I'm going to minus x and minus 6 over. So I get 0 equal to x squared plus 1x minus 6. Now you could choose to do a quadratic formula here, but I can factor this pretty easily. So I'm actually going to solve it by factoring. I get x plus 3 and x minus 2, because when I add those numbers, I get positive 1. And when I multiply those numbers, I get negative 6. So then this one equals zero or this one equals zero, which means negative three equals X or two equals X, okay? So in this case, we have to actually check our answers. And we do have log without a base, right? We have the common base. So we're gonna say log of negative three plus six, close, minus log, of negative three plus two. 
And notice what it says. It says domain error, which means this one is not a solution. Okay, it doesn't work. Now let's try two. Since I already have all this in here, I'm gonna say two and delete that three. Two plus two and close the parentheses. So on the left-hand side, I get this, right? When I plug in two here and here, but now we're gonna see what do we get when we just do log of two on the other side? We get the same value. So we plug two here and here and we got 0 0.301. And then we plug two into here and we also got 301, 0 0.301. So this is the only one that checks out. So this is my solution, okay? So here it says, recall that the domain of a log function is zero to infinity. For this reason, it is always necessary to check that your proposed solutions of a logarithmic equation result in a logarithmic of positive numbers in the original equation. So essentially, instead of checking the whole problem, I could have just checked, oh, if I plug negative three in here, do I end up with a positive argument? And I do. Negative three plus six is positive three. But when I plug in negative three into this argument, I end up with negative one, and that's not a positive argument. Or if I plug negative three into this argument, it's just straight up negative three, which again is not a positive argument, okay? So this one is definitely not a solution. Now we'll try another problem, kind of like this one. So remember, whatever answers we get for x, we need to make sure that this product will be a positive number. Now, it doesn't have logs on both sides, so I'm not gonna be using the same rule as I used before. I will probably be using the exponential to get rid of that log two. So essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two raised to this and two raised to that on the other side. And so what it does is it cancels out the log base two. So all I have is three X minus seven times X minus four, and then two to the power three, is actually eight. And so then let me FOIL this so I can solve my equation. Uh, minus 12x minus 7x plus 28 equal to eight. And I'm gonna minus this eight over. So I get three x squared minus 19x plus 20 equal to zero. Now here you could factor it or you could use the quadratic formula. I think for me, it would be easier because of that three to use the quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so let's see, um, what do we get inside the radical? Negative 19 squared minus 4 times 3 times 20. We get 121 inside the house and the square root of 121 is 11. So this becomes 19 plus 11 over six and then 19 minus 11 over six. Divided by six is five and then 19 minus 11 divided by six, oh, let's put that in a fraction, is four thirds. So we need to make sure that when we plug these two numbers in for x, that we're getting a positive argument. So let's see, three times five minus seven, oops, delete. Let me put this thing in parentheses. And then five minus four. So I get eight in that argument. So that one's good. This one checks out. Um, but now let's check four thirds. So we have three times four thirds minus seven times um, four thirds minus four. And we also get a positive. So for this one, we got two answers. Um, our answers are going to be five and four thirds. And it did say give exact answers, and those are exact. They're not decimals that we had to round, okay? So number example eight is very similar, except we have two logs together, so we have to put them together. And when there's a plus sign, remember the log property. 
whatever your base is, if you're adding, then those arguments get multiplied together, okay? So since I'm gonna be combining these and it's adding, it means that those two arguments are gonna get multiplied together. And then remember this is base 10 when there's no base written there. So I'm gonna use the exponential 10 and raise this equation on both sides with this base 10. So this log base 10 will cancel out the 10 base, leaving me with 3x plus 2 and x minus 1. And then 10 to the power 1 is just 10. And so I'll do before, I'll foil this out. And then I'm going to minus this 10 over. And I'll combine these as well. So I get negative 1x minus 12. And again, you can use quadratic formula or you could factor this, it's up to you. Um, I don't know how to factor that. So let's just go, I mean, I could if I thought about it for a minute, but I'm not going to. So we're just gonna use quadratic formula. So negative B plus or minus B squared minus four times A times C all over two times A. So we're gonna get one plus or minus the square root of something over six. So negative one squared minus four times three times negative 12. I get 145. What is the square root of 145? And it wants exact answers. The square root of 145 does not simplify. So these are my two answers. All I have to do is make sure that they don't give me um, negative arguments. So let's see, we have one plus the square root of 145 over six, and then we have one minus the square root of 145 over six. So let's look at the first one, fraction. One plus the square root of 145 over six. I'm gonna put that in its decimal form. And now I'm gonna do three times this answer plus two and see if I get a negative. I do not. Now I'm gonna do this number minus one and I do not get a negative value. So this one works. Now let's try the other one. So I'm not gonna rewrite everything. I'm just gonna copy that and change this to a minus sign. And then get that decimal. And so now I'm gonna do three times this decimal plus two and I do get a negative argument and you're not allowed to get a negative argument. So this one does not work. I don't even need to check it in the other one. If it doesn't work in one, it doesn't work at all. So you only have one answer here and it's this answer. Okay, but that's the exact version. If it says to round it, then use your double arrow and say this is approximately one point, whatever it was. Um, what was it? One point. Actually, it wasn't one at all. It was 2.17 or 174. Okay. So there we go. Now I saw another problem like this. So remember when there's a minus sign between two logs, you can write them together with the same base, but a minus means division, okay? Equal to one. And then when I see that they have the base four, so I'm gonna raise this side to the four power and this side to the four, not the power, but it's the base. And these things are the new powers. So that's gonna cancel this out. And then four raised to the one power is just four, but I'm gonna multiply by my common denominator. 
And so I get x squared minus 144 equal to 4x plus 48, right? If I distribute my four. Um, and then I'm gonna move everybody over. So this is gonna be minus 4x. And then let's see, negative 144, negative 144, and then minus 48, because I'm gonna move that over. I get minus 192. 192 divided by six, no, 192 divided by eight, 192 divided by 12, oh yeah. So this, I can use a quadratic formula, but I can also factor this, x minus 16 and x plus 12, because Negative 16 plus 12 gives me negative 4, and negative 16 times 12 gives me negative 192. If you do quadratic formula, you should get x equal to positive 16 and x equal to negative 12, just the same as I will with a couple more steps. Okay. Um, and so you still, even if you did the quadratic formula from here, and then you did the quadratic formula, you should still end up with these two answers, okay? But we have to make sure that neither one of them makes the arguments um, negative or zero, because remember the domain is from zero to infinity with the parentheses around zero, right? So zero is not included. Your argument cannot be zero either. It has to be a positive number, not a neutral number like zero and not a negative number. It has to be positive. So when I plug 166 in here, that's going to be a big number, minus 144, it will be positive. If I put 116 um, plus 12 in here, I'll get 28 or whatever it is, but that'll be a positive number. When I try to tuck negative 12 in here, I'm going to get 144 minus 144, which is zero. And if I try to plug negative 12 in there, I'm going to get zero as well. And we know that we cannot get zero, okay? It has to be a positive number, like you know, 0 0.2 would have been great, but not zero by itself. Zero by itself is a neutral sign, not a positive sign. So this is actually my only answer, 16. So I have a couple more. They're not necessarily problems that um, will all be like the ones on this packet. However, I did notice that there were quite a few problems in the homework that were not in this packet. So I did write some other problems down, okay? But I think as far as this packet is concerned, this is pretty much the last of the problem. So one thing I have to tell you is that LN is base E and here you have base E. So these two guys should be canceling each other out and you should have LN of X all by itself. Then you know that if there's a minus sign in the middle, you have to convert them to one ln, but because of the minus, it'll be x over x minus three. So the first argument, and then the second argument at the bottom. And then we have that property that says if the logs and the bases match, then the arguments must match. And let me multiply both sides by my common denominator. So I get x equal to 2x minus 3. I'm going to minus 2x over. I get negative 1x equal to negative 3. Divide by negative 1. I get x is positive 3. But when I plug positive 3 into here, I'm going to get 0 as my argument. And that we cannot have. So I only got one answer, and it was bad. This means that there is no solution. Okay, so make sure you keep in mind, if you get some answers and none of them will check out, then the answer is no solution. So here we are, just basic, um, you know, equations. I don't think we have to do any of these of this type, but for the most part, if you have a logarithmic function, you want to, uh, if you have a logarithmic and you're trying to um, solve this, you can literally just uh, use the different, not sorry, what is it called? The change of base formula, where you do uh, ln of the argument and ln of the base. 
Um, if you have this, you can convert that to an exponential or you can raise both sides with the exponential, right? If you have two logs with the same basis, then the arguments need to equal each other. And similarly, if you had two exponentials with the same base, then the exponents need to be equal to each other, okay? So let's go ahead. This There's no application problems like these, but I did see some application problems, so I want to cover them, okay? Um, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six of these examples that I want to cover sometime. So hopefully we can cover them in about 30 minutes because that's, or yeah, about 30 minutes. 30 minutes, 45 minutes, because I don't think I've used an hour and a half just yet or an hour and 15 minutes just yet. So let's see, I just want to make sure that I am recording. I am recording. Okay, good. So it says, how much money will there be in an account at the end of eight years if 1,000 is deposited at 5% interest compounded quarterly? Assume no withdrawals are made. Use this formula for compounded interest. So it does tell me how much is deposited. So I know that this is my P value. It tells me eight years. So I know that that's my T value. It tells me 5% interest. So I know that this means that my rate is 0 0.05 in its decimal form. And then I know that compounded quarterly means that N equals to four, because quarterly is four times a year, right? And what does it want me to find? It says, how much money will be in the account? So it's really asking me what, what is A, right? So let's plug in all the numbers. We have 1,000 being deposited. This is the number one. 0 0.05 for R, 4 for N, 4 again, times T, which is 8. And this is all numbers, so I can type that in my calculator. One, let me clear, 1,000 parentheses, 1 plus fraction, 0 0.05 over 4, close the parentheses, raise it to 4 times 8. And I get, it's money. So it's going to be 1488.13. Unless it tells you to round to like the nearest dollar or something, normally you round to the nearest cent, okay? But that is it for this particular problem. They do get a little bit weirder, but we'll, we'll get to them as, as we go. So now here it has a function. They changed the letter on us. Instead of using X, they use T. That's not such a big deal. And it says that T is the time in days. So that's going to be important. Um, and F of T is the number of bacteria in millions. Okay. Um, and then find the number of bacteria present after each time. So here it says after two days. Since time is in days, that means that T would equal two. So I'm basically just finding F of two. So I'm gonna plug that in. It's going to be 500 E 0 0.1 times two. And I get, and it's bacteria. So you round up and it's going to be um, 611 bacteria. Million bacteria. If it doesn't say the word million and it just has a box and then it says bacteria, then you will need to convert that number to millions. And so how do you do that in your calculator? You leave it exactly the way it is and you multiply by 1 million, which is six zeros. And so it's actually this number, six mil, or yeah, six one zero seven zero one. Three seven nine, so it's six hundred and ten million, and it doesn't go up because the next number is a one, which isn't enough for the nine to go up. Okay, so pay special attention to the boxes inside uh, the My Math Lab because if it says the word million, you're just going to type in the number that you got, which was six hundred and eleven about. But if it asks you for just bacteria and it doesn't say the word million, 
then you have to take that number and multiply it by a million because the number of bacteria given is in millions. Now, same thing with this. Three days means that T is equal to three. And so we do F of three. So let's see, 500 E to the 0 0.1 times three. And I get um, about 675 million bacteria. But again, if the word million is not there, that is one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. That is six, seven, four, nine, two, nine, four, zero, four. Because this one had a 0.8, so it did round up to zero, four instead of zero, three. Now, the last situation is it says two weeks. So remember, time is in days. So if it's two weeks, then that would be 14 days. And so then my time, my T value is going to be 14. So F of 14. So let's see, 500 E, clear, 500 second E in 0 0.1 times 14. I get two zero two eight million bacteria. But if the word million is not in your next to your box, you do have to multiply by a million. So then you end up with this number. which is 2 billion, 27 million, 599,983. Okay, but I wanted you to see an example like this one, especially with the two weeks having to convert it to days first before you could plug in a number for T. Okay, so the next problem says find the interest rate so this number, I do not know. Um, to the nearest hundredth of a percent. So that means you're going to have point blah, blah, and then percent, OK? Um, and it says that will produce $2,000 if 150 or 1,500 is left at an interest compounded quarterly. So that means N equals 4 for 3.5 years, which is T. Now I just need to figure out which one of these is A and which one of these is P. So A is the amount afterward and P is the amount you put in. So this is the amount that I'm putting in and this is the amount that I need it to produce after the time has passed, right? So we're gonna plug in all these numbers and see if we can find R. So A is gonna be 2000, P is going to be 1500, that's the number one. R, we don't know, so I'm leaving it as R. N is four, and four times 3.5. So my variable is inside that parentheses, so I'm going to have to little by little try to take it out of there. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this coefficient in the front. So I'm going to divide both sides by 1,500. And I get over 1,500. I get four over three as a reduced fraction. And then one plus R over four. And what is four times 3.5? Ah, so I have an exponent of 14. So remember, in order for you to get rid of an exponent, you're going to use a radical. So I need to use the 14th radical. So that, that 14 radical and that 14 power will cancel, okay? But whatever I do to this side, I have to do the same thing to the other side. So let me try to put that in here. Um, I'm gonna write 14 and then second, and then the little hat for the exponent, because this will give me any kind of index. I just needed to type in my index first. And then notice as soon as I press 
this button, it's going to make that 14 small in the radical, like an index. See how it shrunk it? And then in there, I'm going to put a 4 over 3. So that looks exactly like what's on my paper. And I'm not going to round this number at all because it's going to get used to continue calculating, OK? So it does keep going past the 8, but that's not, I don't need that. So I'm going to minus 1 on both sides. And so if I minus one from that, I'm going to end up with 0 0.020761298, so on and so forth. That's gone, so I'm going to have r over 4. Well, in order for me to solve for r, I'm going to have to multiply by 4 on both sides. So I'm going to hit times 4, and I get 0 0.08. Three zero four five one nine two equal to R. Remember, R is in a percent, so I'm going to have to use this button to convert it to a percent. So second and close parentheses, and it should convert this to a percent. So it's actually eight point three. It said round to the left, the nearest hundredth of a percent. So this four is not going to change that zero. So it's 8.30% for R. OK, so we had another, another example, which was a little bit different. I think we did a cut one that was kind of like this in the previous section. Um, so it's kind of good to like come back to it and to revisit it a little bit. Now let's see what they have in store for us for the next example. So for the next example, it says find the number of years. So I don't know what T is. I'm trying to find the number of T years. For this amount to grow to this amount. Well, if this is what I started with, and that's my P. And if this is what it's going to be after some time, then that's my A. Here's my R, which means R equals 8%. It is 0 0.08. And then compounded semi-annually means that n equals only twice. Semi-annually means like halfway in the year. So halfway in the year and then at the end of the year, or the beginning of the year and then the middle of the year, however you want to think about that, but it's only twice per year, OK? Um, and then it says round to the nearest tenth of a year. So once I figure out my time, I need to round to one decimal place, OK? That's the tenths place. So let's see that formula again. A equals P, 1 plus R over N to the N times T, or T times N, same thing. Um, and let's plug in all the numbers we have. So do we have A? We do. 1, 1, 2, 0, 0. Do we have P? We do. 7,700. That's the number 1. We do have R. We do have N but we don't know what t is. So t is in our exponent. So let's simplify the rest of it a little bit and let's see if we can get that exponent. So all of this, I'm gonna divide by the coefficient, 7,700. So let's see, 11200 0, 0 divided by 7700. 0, 0, and it gives me the fraction 16 over 11. Now in here, I'm gonna, those cancel. I'm gonna do that whole thing. So one plus 0 0.08 divided by two. Notice that I have that whole thing in my calculator, just what's in the parentheses, and I'm gonna hit enter. So this is 1.04, and then two times t is two t. So how do I solve an equation like this? Remember, if this is an exponential and you wanna get rid of this base, you need to use the logarithm. So I'm going to do log of base 1.04 on both sides. And we know that when you have a log with a base and an exponential with a base, if the bases are the same, they strike out everything, including the log. And so you end up with just 2t. And then this side we can fix and we can do it in our calculator. We just have to do ln of the argument over ln of the base. 
So let's see what we get for that. Um, clear fraction. LN fraction 16 over 11. Oops, I only put one. And then at the bottom, I'm going to have LN again, but a 1.04. And we get this number 9.5534589. Blah, blah, blah. And then if I'm trying to solve for t, I'm going to divide by two on both sides. And so then I take this number and I divide it by two. And I round to one decimal place. So this is about 4.8 because this seven will cause the seven to go up. And so it's about 4.8 years. That's how long it will take for 11,200, or I'm sorry, for 7,700 to grow to 11,200. Okay, so there's another example. And we're getting into our last couple of examples. And I've lost track of how long I'm taking, but I think I'm just gonna cover these two and then be done. Make sure that you do watch, um, or you do look at the review because when we have class on Thursday, all we're gonna be doing is answering questions about the review, okay? So make sure you take a look at that review and if there's any problems on there you want me to cover, um, we will take a look at those. Um, so this problem says the growth and population of a city can be seen using this formula, where T is the number of years since 1938. Use this formula to calculate the population in 1948, round to this nearest number. So how many years have passed from 1938 to 1948? That would be 10 years, right? So that means that T is going to equal 10. So I'm basically doing the population at 10. And that we can put in our calculator, 606016e oh, to 0 0.007 times 10. And we get 6452. Um, and it says round to the nearest whole number. So this two is not going to change that two. So it is just going to stay this. This is how many people are in that city now. Okay, now let's see another example, last example for this section. It says the growth and population of a city can be seen using this formula, where T is the number of years since 1970. According to this formula, how many years will it take for the population to double its 1970 value? So if this is the population in 1970, then that would be what's happening when t equals zero because it says t is the number of years since 1970. So in 1970, t is equal to zero. So then that means that the population would be how much? Let's see. 3625e, 0 0.003 times 0, we get 3625, okay? So this was the population in 1970, okay? And it says, how long will it take for, how many years will it take for the population to double? So what is double? Three six two five. Well, that's three six two five times two, which is seven two five zero. So you essentially want to find the time when the population equals seven two five zero. So I'm going to take this formula and right here where it says population, I'm going to type in seven two five zero. And we're trying to solve for that t. So the first thing we have to do is get rid of our coefficient.
So 7250 over 3625, which is 2. And remember, this exponential has a base e. So if I want to get rid of an exponential, I have to use a log with base e. But remember, log base e is ln. And then this log base e and this exponential base e will wipe each other out. And so I just have ln of 2 equal to 0 0.003 times t. And if I want to solve for t, I'm just dividing both sides by this decimal. So then let's see, it says round to the nearest tenth of a year. So that's one spot after the decimal. So fraction ln of 2 over 0 0.003. And we get 231.4 is not going to change that. So it's just about 231 years. So that's how long it will take for the population to double. Which, oops, 231 plus 1970, which is like in the year 20, 2201, which is quite a bit away from now. That's like 179 years from now. Okay, so um, that would be our answer for this particular problem. But at least now you have examples of all the different um, scenarios that you'll see on your 4.5 homework, okay? So hopefully that was enough for you to get started on your homework. And if you need anything else from me, if you have any other questions, let me know and also be ready for questions. Um, concerning the review on Thursday, because we're going to be covering, I'm just going to be answering questions. So if there's no questions, it's going to be a really short class. If you have questions, it could take up all of our time and make sure that everybody gets their questions answered. Okay. But other than that, you guys have a great day.